VAT, or very awkward tax as some might call it, is operated in over 160 countries around the world. In the UK alone, in 1920, it generated and bought in £134 billion pounds worth of revenue into the government's coffers. That represents on average £4,700 per household. Those are big eye-watering numbers. It's a tax that's not going to go away. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about what VAT is, how it affects your business and what your role is, and then I'm going to share some numbers with you and an illustration of how the framework and the system works. This video is the first of a mini-series on VAT. Hang on towards the end of the video and I'm going to talk to you what's coming up. Now firstly, what is VAT? It is a tax. It's what's called an indirect tax and it is levied ultimately, it's paid by ultimately the consumer or any business that is not actually registered for VAT. It applies to goods and services, so if you sell product, if you supply services, whether you're an electrician, a plumber, a trainer, an accountant, whether you make things, handbags, clothing, whatever you get the picture, VAT will be applied. Now what's the role of the business? The first thing is to remember is a business gets involved in VAT, it has to what's called register for VAT, when your sales are over 85,000 over a last 12 months. Now I say 85,000, that magic number is subject to change. All you've got to bear in mind is there is a registration limit that says once you've gone past that limit, you then have to enter the fray and you have to be part of the army of tax collectors employed by the government. The only difference is your employment, you don't get any sick pay, you don't get remunerated, it's your responsibility. So once your turnover, your sales for the last 12 months have hit 85, magic marker goes up, the bell rings, you've got to register. Now once you enter the system of registration and you become registered for VAT, what your responsibilities are, are like the many army of millions of businesses in the UK and around the world, is you are an unpaid tax collector. What that means is you have to charge VAT where appropriate on the goods and services you sell to your customers, you pay it over to your suppliers, you work out what the difference is, and then you pay that over to the government, and you pay that over to them typically every three months, or sometimes you pay it monthly. So you collect the tax, you keep the record, absolutely essential, there's certain rules and regulations that you've got to follow, if you don't, you're going to get a rap on the knuckles and potentially a financial consequence, and you have no choice in the matter. You collect it, you pass it over. So to a large extent, apart from the extra admin, the extra time, the resources that you expend in being an unpaid tax collector, it does not affect your profitability in the main. It's neutral. You're merely collecting it and passing it on. Now folks, follow me, and I'm just gonna go through some slides to show you how it works with some visual. Earlier on in the video, I said that once you hit that magic number, what's called the registration limit, currently in the United Kingdom it's £85,000 over the last 12 months. In other countries around the world, there will be different registration limits. But in the UK, we're currently operating at £85,000. There are four parties involved here. We have a farmer who is uh, growing wheat to sell on to a brewer. We've got the brewer who buys in that wheat and uses it as part of the ingredients to make brew beer to then sell on to pump. Pump then buys that beer from the brewer and then sells that on to customers and the customers will come in and purchase that beer. Three of those parties have what I call collection role. They are the ones who are all in the system to help operate the system on behalf of the government, all unpaid tax collectors. Let's see what goes on. Now, specifically in this slide, I've not added any numbers. The numbers will come on the next slide. I'll make a reference to documentation, but in next week's video, we're gonna drill down in more detail to actually look at what the requirements are, how the VAT uh, system actually operates in terms of mechanics, and we're also going to be looking at something called reverse charging and claiming back VAT. Now we've got our farmer who's growing the wheat. Now the farmer, in financial terms, sells that wheat onto the brewer and will be charging VAT on the sale of that wheat to the brewer. The farmer will collect the VAT from the brewer, put that to one side, and that money belongs to the government. It does not belong to the farmer. There will be paperwork, there'll be systems that have to be uh, in operation, 
More of that in next week's video. The brewer will buy in that wheat and use that to make beer to sell on to the pub. Now the brewer in turn will sell that beer on and whatever they sell that beer for in value terms, VAT will be part of that price they're charging to the pub. The brewer will collect the VAT from the pub, puts that to one side, that belongs to the government. Now the last part of the cycle, the last part of the chain, is where the pub then sells the beer onto the customers and it collects the VAT from those customers. So every time a pint of beer is sold, there will be VAT that's been charged and the pub will collect that from the customer. Now, it's a bit of a spoiler alert. The first three parties are the collectors. The customer, as we'll see on the next slide, is the one who picks up the burden, is the one who ultimately pays for that VAT. Now, let's overlay some numbers and see what we've got. Now, before those numbers come into play, let's remind ourselves of the general roles, the general parties involved, and I've laid out a table here, no numbers here. I don't want to get clouded down with the numbers, but let's set up the parameters first of all. Now we've got the four parties at the top. We've got the farmer, we've got the brewery, we've got the pub, and we've got the end customer. And just to make it more illustrative, I've given names to our farmer and the pub. Now on the top line represents some numbers that I'm going to add in a moment for what each party will sell on to each other. And underneath represents what they're buying in and on the bottom section is going to be the VAT that's been collected and then passed over to the government. We've now got the four parties and I've overlaid some numbers. So we've got Fred's Farm who's selling the wheat onto the brewery for which they're going to be charging the brewery £1,000. They add the standard rate of VAT which is currently 20% in the United Kingdom. That means that's £1,200 on the invoice. When the brewery eventually pays, £1,200 will be paid into, into the Fred's Farm bank account. Of that, £200 is collected on behalf of the government and put to one side. So the value of the turnover for Fred is £1,000. £200 of the money collected belongs to the government for VAT. And the total amount that's coming to the bank account is £1,200. And at the bottom, we've got here, Fred owes the government the £200, which we will be paid over typically once a quarter. More of that in next week's video. Now these numbers are purely illustration. This does not suggest what Fred the farmer is making. The numbers are purely there to help explore and share the story. Now the brewer in turn will take that wheat, add it with other ingredients, no doubt will have other costs as well, and then sells that beer on to this pub called the Toll House. They will charge the Toll House pub £3,000 for the sale of that beer, they will add VAT at 20% and therefore the invoice value is 3,600. When the toll house pay the brewery, 3,600 will go into its bank account. 600 is ring fenced for the VAT it owes the government and 3,000 pounds is the value of the turnover that the brewery will record. Now, it's not gonna pay over the full 600 pounds because it's also paid out VAT to Fred's Farm for buying the wheat in the first place. So we look just underneath. The value of the purchase from the Fred's Farm has £200 of worth of VAT collected. So just like a seesaw, on the one side it collects £600. It can deduct, offset, claim the credit for the £200 it's paid to Fred. So that's £400 it will pay over to the government at the end of a VAT quarter or each month if it decides to do so. And again, more of that in next week's video. Now, lastly, we have the Toll House, our pub that sells beer to its customers. It takes for that night £6,000 over the bar. Of that £6,000, £1,000 is the VAT is collected from the customers and £5,000 represents the value of the turnover for that pub. So at this moment, the Toll House has got £1,000 is collected. It's going to then pass over to the government. However, it's also going to take into account what it's purchased from the brewery. Now it purchased beer of which £600 worth of VAT was charged. So therefore, if we balance the two off, £1,000 collected, £600 paid to the brewery, it can offset one against the other. So that's £400 it will remit to the government. It's merely collecting, taking into account what it's paid over to previous suppliers and pays the difference. Now, when it comes to the customer, the customer is the one that bears the burden of the VAT. So in that pint of beer, in those beers that it's drunk during the evening, 
Collectively, that's a thousand pounds for the VAT. So ultimately the burden on VAT falls on the consumer or a business perhaps that's not VAT registered or any entity or buyer that isn't registered for VAT. And that folks represents the cycle of VAT and how it operates. In next week's video, we look at this in more detail in terms of the administration requirements, the VAT invoices, claiming back the VAT, the VAT return, and also reverse charging. If you got some value from this video, I'd love it if you could share it, comment, feedback accordingly, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out the weekly updates that we have. So folks from me, have a great week. See you next week.